Hi there, Star Wars Collectors, and welcome to another Bosk Bounty video. Welcome to episode 88 of Ask Bosk Bounty. This is, of course, the weekly series where you ask me questions in the comment section below, and I do my very best to answer them. So if you do have a question for next week's episode, please leave it in the comment section below and hopefully you will be featured. I just wanted to apologise for not doing the episode last week. There was a big football match on which England ultimately lost. Of course, I'm very, very disappointed, as you can imagine. If you're not English or you don't support England, then I'm sure you're over the moon. But enough about that. Let's get back onto Star Wars. Let's get back onto this week's episode. We've got loads and loads to go through with the Hasbro Q&As, dropping some bombshells and some questions from two weeks ago, which I want to answer in this week's episode so let's get straight on to it and if you do happen to enjoy the episode please leave a like down below because it really does help the video and the channel. Oriel says what do you think the next Black Series HasLab is going to be? I personally think that it's the Max Rebo band or at least so I hope. Okay so when I originally did the reveals video when they announced that the next HasLab project was going to be a Black Series project this is what I said. But I guess the big news for the Black Series has to be the news that the next Star Wars HasLab project will be a Black Series item. Now they did say that the Black Series is a too big a scale for vehicles, which I totally agree with. So therefore this hints to me that either a group of figures such as the Cantina Aliens or perhaps a big creature such as the Rancor will be that HasLab project. It'll be interesting to speculate on what it will be, but that, that's kind of my feelings of how they'll go with it. So there you go, back then I did think that it could have been maybe a selection of figures or I did mention the Rancor. You know, I really thought that it could be a creature. And as you're probably aware, on this week's Hasbro Q&As, not the session that I was in, but on one of them, I think Patrick accidentally said that it was gonna be the Rancor. He kind of leaked it out accidentally. And the very next day on StarWars.com, Lucasfilm announced that it was gonna be the Rancor for the HasLab and not Hasbro. So. I have a feeling that Patrick might have got in a bit of trouble for that, which is, you know, not something I want to hear. I do not want anyone to get in trouble in their jobs. That's just awful. So, you know, all jokes aside and everything, I do feel for Patrick. It was a mistake. But obviously, as the Star Wars community, we're happy because we now know what the Black Series HasLab is going to be. And of course, it's going to be the Rancor. So are you happy with that? Are you going to buy it? Of course, you'll probably want to see it first. And also, what do you think the stretch goals are going to be? I mean, I personally think that the Rancor Keeper, this guy will be a shoe in He'll be an automatic choice for po probably the first stretch goal. But how deep do you think they'll go? Do you think they could offer an Ula or maybe even a Jiran? Or do you think maybe Jiran's a bit too deep of a character, a bit too background for the Black Series? Of course, with 3.75 inch, we're always spoiled. Or at least we used to get a lot of the background characters like Jiran here, absolutely awesome figure. Will they go that deep in the Black Series? Who knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Ryan Byrne says, with the announcement that Hasbro Amazon will make a second run of the new Bad Batch 4-pack early next year, do you think they'll correct the name of Captain Ballast to Captain Hauser? He's called Hauser in the show. It'll make a way to distinguish between the first run and the second run set and possibly making the Ballast version more valuable. Personally, I don't think they're going to do that. Again, this was brought up in the Q&A that I attended with Hasbro when asked about that pre-order and how long it will take for the second batch to arrive. I think what's going to happen with the second batch is that it's going to be a order and then virtually straight after you've ordered it, you'll be getting it. Whereas other people that managed to pre-order the first version have pre-ordered it. Now, of course, they did bring up the ballast situation and now he's called Hauser. And that's just the unfortunate circumstance where they get information early, they produce the figures and then they change it in the show at the last minute. So personally, I don't think it will be changed. But one bit of news that I did get out of Hasbro on my Q&A is that that pack of figures will actually be unpunched inside the pack, which was awesome. I asked the question about unpunched figures coming back and they said they can't do that for one reason or another. Probably something to do with retail and the mess and things like that. I don't really know. But he said because those are packed within the box, they will be unpunched. And I did question that. I said, well, you know, the same sort of pack that we had for the skiff guards was punched. And he said, no, these will be unpunched and that's news. So that was awesome. Donald Allen says, hey, Tim, great show as always. Thank you so much, Donald. Question for next week. If you were in charge, what would be the next wave of new vintage collection figures? Hopefully it includes the frog lady. Uh, the frog lady would be a good one. I would not say no to that. But I think if I was going to pick the next wave of vintage collection figures, it would have to be the Bad Batch figures. Um, you know, the Black Series have them. We're getting that four pack of clones and stuff like that. We really need the main characters from the Bad Batch. And... 
as the weeks go on i'm more and more enjoying that show and i think it would be good to have the main characters including echo and the uh, different crosshair as well in his sort of imperial outfit or whatever you know all of those i'd take and they i think that'd make a great wave shocking stuff says hey boss love your channel just wondering your thoughts on pre-orders selling out yeah, it's really not a good situation, is it? I think, you know, obviously people should always be able to get what they want from, from a pre-order. But they did talk about that on the Q&A with Hasbro and they did mention and they were alluding to the Bad Batch 4-pack in that they made the normal quantities of it. It just sold out really, really quickly. I think the problem with that is that they allowed people to order more than one or two. You know, I think you could actually order 30 of that set, which is obviously a scalper's paradise. And I think that probably contributed to that. I think a lot of people just went out and bought loads of them, stuck them on eBay. And that is the unfortunate thing. I think with pre-orders and the partners that they work with, they should just make sure that they limit them to one or two per customer. Zachary Ludlum says, hi, BB. Question for next week. When the two pack-in figures that are carded, Grogu and the Offworld Jawa, come with a razor crest this fall will you be opening them or keeping them carded i don't know what to do myself so i was wondering what your plan is for them keep up the great work so basically because i'm a loose and carded collector i will be keeping those two carded i don't really see any point in opening those figures anyway i already have the child multiple times i have the crib okay it's not the vac metalized crib but if i really wanted to vac metalize one of those i could just use a silver pen on the, on one of them and, and paint it up silver the off-world Jawa, the only real difference for that one is a split egg. So you can see the yolk inside and a little necklace and a little knife, I believe. And to be honest, I don't really need that. You know, I could just buy myself a bunch of these guys and it'll look absolutely fine. I don't, I don't really see the need to open those two. And as a carded collector, of course, if you're only going to be buying the one Razor Crest, then really you're going to be wanting to keep those two carded you know, to go with your other sets. Couple of questions here about cardstock. So Starkiller says, question for next week. Do you think there's any chance that Hasbro will listen to collectors and make the cardboard for the vintage collection card backs thicker? And Shakes the Clone, my Patreon supporter said, question for next Ask BB. For those who haven't watched the Hasbro Q&A Zoom videos, can you sum up the news on thicker card backs? So absolutely. So for Starkiller's question, it sounds like they do listen to us. At the end of the day, a lot of people have been moaning about the cardstock thickness and, and absolutely right, they have become thinner and they address that. So they are saying that all new card backs from possibly about the end of 2021 this year and beginning of 2022 for both the vintage collection and the retro collection will be on thicker cardstock. Now, I don't know how thick that cardstock will be, I hope it will be something similar to what they've used for the Marvel Legends or something similar to the original vintage card backs. I don't particularly want them to go as thick as they have done for the prototype multicolored Boba Fett or the carbonized figures. I'm not really a massive fan of those because to me that just looks like a thick piece of cardboard with the print stuck on each side. That They're not really as good as I think they could be. All we need is this, just thicker. So it doesn't bend and doesn't warp and doesn't crease. And it looks like they're addressing it. So they do listen to the fans. And from early next year, end of this year, early next year, new card stock will be on retro collection and vintage collection. Robert Westwood says, question for next week. Do you think that VC25 R2D2 qualifies as covering two figures from the original 96, the R2D2 with Periscope and the Power of the Force R2D2 with pop-up lightsaber? As always, thanks again for the content. Your efforts, comments, and insights are appreciated. Thank you so much, Robert. Yeah, this one's a difficult one with the R2-D2. I, I, I'm erring on the side of, I think they do think that might cover them. Um, I'm not too sure if they count the card backs as completing the 96, as whereas maybe it's more of the figures. And he probably does qualify for both. It's a shame because I would love that original Power of the Force to image of r2d2 where he's you know been shot or whatever by the indoor bunker and all the electricity's coming out of him and everything that would be that would be awesome and of course the original periscope one is brilliant as well with c3po on the on the on the card back with him it's a shame but um i i personally think that they'll probably get to other figures from the original 96 before they even start thinking about those maybe in the future who knows i mean i could be completely wrong but that's just my gut feeling danielle says 
I find the Black Series bo a lot better than the Vintage Collection bo but yet I might be a bit biased. Yeah, so this isn't really a question, it's more of a statement, and it's because I often say that I prefer the Vintage Collection, and, it's, and it is because I'm biased. But I have a bit of footage here from my good friend Andy over at the Holo Chronicles. He said I could use this bit of footage, and basically he was at a convention, and Katie Sackoff, who plays bo was there, and he was getting something signed. And he recorded this little bit of footage here and listen to what she says about the head sculpt for the vintage collection figure. Now, how many action figures do you have of you? Like, I'm sort of collecting them now. Yeah. Um, this is your mama. I think there's only been, like, authentic action figures. I think Starbuck and, and, and with Bo Katan. But if we're talking, like, other action figures like pop made a special flash one that was really cool um so like three okay but the black series is the coolest one i, I, think, I so agree far. It's a, as good a likeness as you could probably hope for there's a new one coming out it's called the vintage star wars mm -hmm. that's a bo-katan that looks almost actually so much like me it's a little weird it's, it's it's strange. I can't wait till that one. Those ones are, I think they're, I think they're in pre-order, but they, they, I don't know. They just come out with things. I'm like, oh, that. So thank you so much, Andy, from the Holo Chronicles podcast for letting me use that bit of footage. I will leave a link to your YouTube channel in the description below. And I advise everybody that's watching this video to go check out Andy and Josh's channel, the Holo Chronicles. Adam Guggenheim, question. It's so true about the vintage collection quality being a step change better. Was there some technical advance on the new Bad Batch Rex soft goods poncho? It just seems like how it sits. Is some sort of jump ahead in soft goods technology, do you agree? Well, I haven't actually got the figure in hand, so I can't comment fully, but just from the pictures, it looks brilliant. And I just think soft goods in general for the vintage collection since it's come back have been very good. You have to look at the Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight. That is probably the best soft goods cape going. This one here from Ray Island Journey that I've put onto the new Ahsoka figure is is perfect. It looks it looks great on her, absolutely, and it fits like a glove. Even older figures that they've updated, such as the Emperor's Royal Guard, they've improved the cloak on that one, and it fits a lot better on the shoulders. So yeah, I just do think in general they're they're improving things as they go. Team Toys says hi Tim, love the series so much. Question for next episode: Which 2021 vintage collection figure or figures do you predict? will be the most valuable in years to come. Oh man, that's that's very, very difficult to say. I, I always think of it as, um, look at the figures that are, you know, short packed. So if there's a pack of eight figures and there's only one of one of them and there's two of the others or whatever, then that one tends to be the one that's not as produced so much, but it's impossible to say really. The vintage collection at the moment is very, very popular. I think a lot of people are almost speculating with it and they buy multiples of each one which is great for the line because at the end of the day the more sales the better and the more that we'll get in future years so i'm not against people buying multiples so long as everybody gets them but yeah it's very difficult vintage collection 1.0 is obviously going mad at the moment with people that have come into the hobby late and then want to go back and get those older figures but even some figures from vintage collection 2.0 like r2d2 you know he goes for like north of 60 70 pounds which is what $80, $90 now, which is which is just crazy. Hazel Chavez says, Ask BB, what inspired you as a kid to collect and search for all the figures? Also, I really admire how you and Little Bosk are fellow collectors. I really want to have that collection relationship when I have a child. Yeah, it's awesome. It is really awesome. I, you know, we both enjoy collecting together. It's, it's awesome. In terms of the question, uh, what inspired me as a kid? Well, it was just essentially that's all we had was the figures. When I was a kid, you couldn't watch the film multiple times because it was in the cinema. And once it was out of the cinema, that was it. You know, there was no, uh, it wasn't out on VHS or Betamax at the time. You couldn't watch it in your home. And if you could, you were very, very lucky. It was only later on, maybe when I was 10 or 11, that it was on TV and you could record it yourself and then watch it multiple times. So in the early days, sort of like the early 80s, you just had the figures and we loved the figures. And it was just the inspiration was to go and just try and get as many as you possibly can because you played Star Wars rather than watching it. Simply Star Wars says, hey, Boss Bounty, love the content as always. Do you believe that the Vintage Collection could see another gaming greats wave in 2022, including the likes of Cal Kestis, Fett 1313, Revan, or potentially a Hoth Starkiller? 
I think they tend to mix up with some figures that have been seen in the Black series and some new unseen characters in figure form. So I have no doubt that we will see more gaming greats in 2002. I think they are very happy with the success that the first wave had. In terms of Cal Kestis, he will not be in the gaming greats line. They answered that on a previous uh, Q&A that I was involved in where I asked that question directly. And Cal Kestis will be in the main line if he gets released. The gaming greats is really just about sort of repaints and, you know, uh, kit bash of figures. They won't put a newly sculpted figure into the gaming greats line, if you know what I mean. Stephen Angel says, hey boss, since my last question was music related, which I'll definitely get back to you at some point. Today is TV related. What non Star Wars shows do you like watching? I've recently gotten absolutely hooked on Peaky Blinders and I'm definitely watching Loki too. Yeah, Peaky Blinders is a fantastic series. There's loads of things that I love watching. You know, uh, the Breaking Bad series was awesome. Peaky Blinders, as you say. I love Ozark on Netflix. We love that. Me and my wife love watching that. Uh, when you're talking about older things that I used to watch when I was a kid, I mean, I used to love things like The Fall Guy and Knight Rider, Dukes of Hazard. All those kinds of TV programs were awesome. And then, of course, British comedy. I can just watch over and over again on repeat. You know, Alan Partridge, The Office. I like the American Office as well, and Parks and Recreation, I love those two. Only Fools and Horses, Forty Towers, there's so many things that I enjoy, but that, that just gives you a bit of a taste of the sort of things that I like. All right then guys, that's it for this week's questions. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget that I have reviewed the whole new wave of vintage collection figures. They are on the channel at the moment. Check out those reviews. Please leave your question for next week's episode. Thank you so much for my Patreon supporters listed here. I have 63 Patreon supporters now, which is awesome. So thank you so much. It really does help the channel and it helps me invest in things to improve the channel like lights and cameras and microphones and things like that. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for watching guys and we shall see you on the next one.